This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level 0 NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. I gotta, I gotta pee. Ooh. It's weird, I don't usually do this. I've never pee. done this. Do it. In the do middle it. of an Enjoy. episode. Never happened. It's so weird. I'll be right back. Let's just include all this in the episode start. You're really Might fucked well. up, yeah. If we just, you know, let's enjoy yeah. it. Then I'm going to eat some corn while, while Matt's okay, peeing. Back. Oh, oh, yeah. This is some good tape. Matt pees. Julia eats corn. Hopefully you can't hear it. Well, can I'm hear going to grab a, a cold Dr. Zevia from my fridge and then open it real close to the mic. I feel like I should be doing something. <laughs> Before I go, I'm going to comment. I like that this fountain is no particular shape. <laughs> <laughs> it has no axes of symmetry. It's just, yeah, it's good. Conversation starter. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's the That's colonel's true. favorite shape. <laughs> Nothing. None. <laughs> I'm in. Well, it does have a shape. It's just inconsistent. There's a lot going on there. Kind of looks like a pull tab for something. Yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? This is good TV. Right here. I, I have returned, and as promised, here is the sound. Do it. Oh, yeah. That pull tab sound. You what need flavor? A... I'm, I'm back. That's a Dr. Zevia. It is a Stevia-based Dr. Pepper clone. Oh, I see. Okay. See, I don't know these things. Okay, gotcha. It's not bad at all. Mm. Zevia is a sugar-free alternative mm -hmm. to soda that is based mm. on Stevia. And it has many flavors. Dr. Zevia being the Worst. most obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pepper flavor. They also have cola flavor. Uh, two different root beers now. No way. A ginger root beer and a what is it called? A creamy root cream beer, I guess? cream root beer. Mm. And and their their cola tastes like a boy's bathroom smells. <laughs> <laughs> now speaking of that, um, Matt, I wanted to ask you. Um, did the water like you know it was kind of giving you trouble? Um, from one day, did it give you? Did it burn coming out too? Is, is no, it felt fine coming out. Oh, nice. So fucking, although, okay, so I uh, I have two Ziploc bags filled with chopped onions <laughs> and water in my my bathroom. Sink. I thought you were going to say, I have two Ziploc bags filled with my urine. <laughs> right. In Thank you, by the way, for asking uh, the questions on everyone's mind there, Julia. Yes. Oh, my. This yes. quaint gazebo Thank looks you. like it was once a nice spot for a quiet reflecting. Uh, I need north. Oh, my God. There's Clarence. Oh, my God. Someone's here. Something's happening. But I need to know about the Ziploc bags full of water and onions. <laughs> well, now we're not with That's the Clarence. biggest mystery so far. <laughs> I'll get to it. I, I can tell you all about it. In the bathroom you keep these? Okay. <laughs> so, so That's what is, you said. This is a journey. This is a journey. This is it potpourri? So uh, anybody who's been listening to the show for the last several weeks, ever since we started the show, knows I've had a cough. All right? Mm -hmm. So I got this. Yep. I got a viral cough. Uh, about a month and a half ago to two months ago. And it won't fucking leave. Um, and I looked it up uh, because I, I haven't gotten to see my doctor yet. I should, but I haven't. Mm -hmm. And it's probably it's probably a mild pneumonia that happens after Aww. you get a virus, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like looking up. I'm like, okay, what can I do? What can I do to deal with this? And <laughs> last night... I had a big cup of coffee around 1 a.m. Oh. And so I was wired. And I'm like, like... the right time to have coffee. It doesn't, does, it doesn't, does it? But I was getting like a headache and I hadn't had enough. And anyway, the, the point is, is I ended up going down a rabbit hole. And I'm like, uh, and it was like, there was this woman saying that uh, if you put um, chopped up onions on the bottom of your feet, You'll get rid of pneumonia, oh. and I'm like, that's that, that can't be true. 
<laughs> That's so that stupid. Definitely not true. That is definitely not true. But what if it is true? <laughs> so <laughs> I went upstairs. I chopped up an onion. I split it up into two bags. <laughs> I put it on my feet. And I put socks over top. <laughs> Has your wife forgiven you yet? She does. Okay. This was 1 a.m. Nobody knew I was doing this. All right. <laughs> so, so I came downstairs and I started doing some work. And then, you know, around 2.30, I was like, maybe I should go to bed. I've got these onions on my feet. They say you should do it for a long time. And so I crawled into bed. <laughs> and then I noticed. I noticed around 2.30, 3 o'clock, that the onion juice was leaking onto my bed. <laughs> Has your wife forgiven you yet? Let's just hold on. Okay? Okay. So it was, just, right. it was, it was we'll just a little It was just a little bit. It was just a little bit. So I was like, okay. So I got out of bed, and I, and I just, I, I was like, I don't know what to do with these onions right now. So I just, I just sort of was tired. So I just sort of took them off and I, I put them on the, on the sink. <laughs> and I, you know, I went into the shower and I, I washed my feet off and, and I, okay. So that that's, that's good. Right. So like I wake up this morning and, and Meg's like, why does it smell like onions everywhere? <laughs> and in the bathroom, there they are. So I, I filled up these bags of foot onions <laughs> with water. To, to, and then I'll, I'll get rid of them. I'll probably just dump them down the toilet. No, um, you, you essentially sure? made a couple bags of mat stock. <laughs> <laughs> teacher, I have a question, teacher. My hand okay. is up. Okay, yes, go ahead, Julia. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, what what were you hoping to solve by putting water in the bags of onions? Okay, so it, it, it actually like cut the smell by like seventy percent. Like it, I just uh, okay, I I don't. This might be such a stupid question. Like maybe <laughs> why I didn't I just put them down the toilet? Yeah, well, or just throw them in the garbage and take the garbage out into the you know the waste part outside so, so that you okay. The problem is is that I didn't. I didn't want, want to do to? that <laughs> because it was on a different floor and I, I don't want to throw it in the bathroom garbage and no, then deal with not. that. I would I want to put it in the compost, but the compost is on another floor. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, some, that's some good executive function <laughs> shit. So long story you, you short. Know, you know the answer, but you choose the answer that involves an amount of steps that you feel comfortable with. I yeah. know that feeling exactly. Yeah, exactly. But here's the miraculous part. My cough is gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gone. Like, it was really bad last night. And I'm really thinking of doing it again. <laughs> like, what the hell? Well, probably doesn't hurt anything. Just generates a smell for a while. Smells are fleeting. I, I, They're not always fleeting, but most household I, I, smells I, are fleeting. I, it, I, it just it blew my mind. Like, that, that, my cough, I barely coughed today. All day. What, what upsets the hell? me about this? What upsets me about this is we did a, just did a whole episode where this wasn't like the top story for the episode <laughs> to discuss. How is this something that you didn't think was interesting or weird enough to mention? Okay, well, so the, like this happens in my life a lot, like this kind of thing. Not this exact thing <laughs> that, that doesn't happen, but <laughs> you this put is, vegetables this, on your feet a lot. To yeah, address some multiple concerns. Yeah. Also, with the, my level of ADHD, I just forgot they were there. So when I went when I went to pee, I was saw these two sacks of mat stock in the, in the sink, and I'm like, oh yeah, I should probably talk about that. Washed my hands over top of them. <laughs> Came oh out my here. god! The uh, folk remedy for putting onions in your socks or otherwise on your feet uh, stems from the belief that uh, sort of the the belief in miasma, the idea that. Uh, poisonous noxious air is what caused a lot of maladies yeah i don't i don't know i don't know what's going on i, I don't know if it's placebo it's funny because it's funny i didn't believe in it still don't but uh, there are worked. other there are other foot related folk remedies that it might stem from 
Uh, and if there is a scientific basis, uh, no, this article does not. No. <laughs> okay. okay. It does not, it does not so, offer one. So whether no, there is one. I, I know that, but like, I know. Okay. He, no, there is somewhat of a, of a, of a scientific basis to this because I actually heard about something kind of similar to this, um, that not, not that it was to solve or cure anything, but I, and apparently this is backed up because I just Googled it from the American Chemical Society. If you, um, stick your foot in a bag filled with garlic cloves or, and rub them on the bottom of your foot, you, foot, you will actually be able to taste the garlic. I haven't clicked on the link to find out why that is, but apparently that's the thing that I have heard, and that seems like a pretty reputable source. The American Chemical Society. It it it, it fucking it, it blew my mind. So something is happening. Something yeah. something crazy happened, and and I've been dealing with this cough for it's 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 not even a dry cough. Like if it was a dry cough, I'd actually be concerned. Like I'd probably have gone to see a doctor, but because it's actually wet, I feel like it was definitely like some sort of stupid pneumonia that was holding on, and. I am allergic to a lot of antibiotics. So mm. getting infections is just kind of my nightmare because uh, it's just like, uh. so I was like, you know, I was all hepped up on caffeine and I thought, I'm not just going to try this. And then it, and then it fucking worked. So you so discovered I, the cure for chronic uh, coughing and you like just decided to bury the lead. Well, I also forgot that that happened. <laughs> but now I remember. It, uh, I remember. Yeah. Anyway, I I I kept reading about uh, uh, any scientific basis for it. There may be some like antibacterial benefits to onions because they're a bit uh, acidic, but it is likely to be the placebo effect is prevailing. Wisdom well, he, on the here's subject. the garlic. Here's the explanation for why the garlic works. It's because it's a, uh, the molecules responsible for garlic smell, allicin, can penetrate your skin, get into your blood, and travel to your mouth and nose when you where you can suddenly start to sense the taste of garlic. Yeah. Um, so maybe something similar is happening where the where the onion part, like whatever chemical it is that's in onions, um, is penetrating your skin and traveling in through your blood to your mouth and nose or something, and it's kind of getting into your lungs or something. Who knows? Who knows? This is I amazing. I, I don't know, but I will, I will tell you this. I, this is not, like, if it is a placebo, it, it skipped my entire conscious mind and went to my subconscious that believed it. Because <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, and somehow we have returned to Fujita. <laughs> it's true. You really steeped yourself there. Well, uh, like, uh, people think about the placebo effect as if it's like uh, an accusation of being like a hypochondriac or something like that. But the placebo effect is a real measurable yes, effect. It's like 80% effective or something. Yeah. It, it, it People really do feel benefits from a placebo effect. It's not that it didn't do anything, it's that it did do something. Yeah. Something presented as a remedy, if a person believes it will work, there is evidence to suggest that it sort of does work. But I didn't. Um, I didn't believe it would work. I thought it was bullshit. But I was. I, I but was, you did try it. But I did try thing. it. And I think that yeah, might be in, enough. That might in be a enough. vague 1am hope. Look, I don't know what it, I don't know what it was, um, and and really, I think we need to find a way to package placebos and all heal our mm -hmm. own our, ourselves. Because I'll tell you, it fucking worked. I barely coughed all day. I mean, they do. That is like half of the uh, that's like, prayer drug. <laughs> That's stuff, prayer that's all well. alt that's all alternative medicine all and alternative also prayer. Is <laughs> that's true. Placebo and prayer. That's true. Yes. Well, you know what? Fuck it. If it yeah. if it if it works, great. That's yes. fucking great. And it doesn't. Also, the the article I skimmed there said it was probably harmless. So try it. You know, exactly. I don't have any problem with people putting onions on their feet. Nobody loses. If you except guys, for your wife, a little it, bit. Briefly. Yeah. Well, it's fine. She 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 didn't even notice until the morning. Mm -hmm. Um. But like, if you guys are dealing with cough, throw some. Uh, here's what you do: you take an onion, chop it up, put half in one Ziploc bag and half in the other Ziploc bag. Put your feet in those Ziploc bags and then put a sock over top. Just don't go to sleep with it because of the leak onion juice on your bed. But like, work. Do it. Work. Work for like five solid hours <laughs> with onions on your feet. Works. I don't know what to tell you. Possible if you're working from home. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could probably like tie up if the top were, of it so they don't leak as much, or I don't know. Yeah. You know. If you work in an office, consider not doing that. Yeah, don't do that if you work yes. in an office. But yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 uh, it blew me away. So yeah, you'll become less popular than the person that microwaves fish. But like, <laughs> oh god, scenario. 
No, I don't think so. <laughs> That's the most hated person in the office. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you. Clarence seems to be sulking about Yeah, something. yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, anyway. There, that's my onion foot story. <laughs> My favorite thing about the onion foot story is that it wasn't even one of the questions we got asked. <laughs> That's no. true. No. Absolutely true. Uh, talk to... Yeah, he, he just had that whole talk with Gloria. Please, I'm not really more conversation. Please. Ask about mm-hmm. Gloria. Still my prowler, will you? Tell about mm. Gloria. Oh, oh, just still my fair. Just still my fair. Clarence. Kiss, kiss him. Oh. You're like, he's kiss single Clarence. now. Wow. You hardly even know the man. That's fair. Uh oh! What are we Use doing? Crowbar. <laughs> okay. <on Clarence. laughs> Why would? What do you want to do with the crowbar? Brain Clarence. It's not gonna crowbar. understand that. <laughs> Dome Clarence with crowbar. <laughs> you wouldn't even see it coming. Dome like he's looking down. Clarence with crowbar. Just put in murder. Come on. Murder Clarence with. Crowbar. In gazebo. In the gazebo. <laughs> now, now, there's no need for that. Come on, now. Sure there is. Hit I'm... Clarence with crowbar. Crowbear. You don't have a violent nature. That's clearly not true. Keeps telling <laughs> us that, and yet, here we are. Here we are. ba 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 Hey, uh... I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> uh, hey, you guys want to do some Colonel's Be Questions? Colonel's yeah. Be Questions? Yeah, we yes. can probably do that. Now that we've talked about my... <laughs> I want to make it clear, first of all. The water's not disgusting, okay? My feet are clean. Like it's not like it, well, it's not it's not like, I wouldn't eat the onions. Matt's a hygienic fellow. Yeah, but we we know this about him. I'm just I'm disturbed. It's still there too. Okay, but I, <laughs> anyway. it's your own goddamn home. It's your bathroom. I know. I know. Your family even has other bathrooms to use. It's I a know. nice big house. I know. It's fine. And, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's actually in the basement bathroom too. There's no way. Yeah, that's like your lair down there's there. There's no there's nobody like even my family doesn't even use that one. I use that cuz this is where I did all my onion shit down in the basement. <laughs> anyway, uh hey, welcome to another round Colonel's be questions. Damn. Wow. Seth Wilson asks, on a scale of 1 to 10, how disturbing is the discrepancy between the spelling and pronunciation of Colonel? But a seven for me is what South Wilson says. Seven's a good number. Um, I agree. Seven, six, seven or six. Well, like to frame it, we'd need to know what a ten is <laughs> in terms of spelling. Every time like, you when you see learn it, the spelling of something, you touch madness. Every time you see it. <laughs> yes. So I'm I'm gonna say there's a lot of Welsh. That's about a ten. Mm, yeah. Yep. You know. Oh yeah. There's like place names. Like like yeah. uh uh how's it pronounced? Worcestershire sauce. You know? Sure. That's gotta yeah. be up there. Worc- yeah, Worcestershire. Um or no. Uh there's no, it's even it's even more normal than that, even though it's spelled like I don't know. Yeah, Pr- Worcester, either either way, right? Here yes, here in um, here uh here in uh, Atlantic Canada, there are a lot of place names uh, that are sort of like Americanized spellings of Native American words. That's true. Um, that it is fun whenever someone who is not from Atlantic Canada is trying to find their way around because they cannot pronounce them at all. Um, yeah. yeah. 
and we just kind of take these things for granted. Yeah. And I think that's true. That is true. Have, that's true everywhere. Do you have an example? Uh, like, uh, uh, like Muscadabit. Muscadabit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Muscadabit oh. is one. It's, 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 uh, I don't even know how to spell it. I just sort of, I don't, you don't look I'll at the look spelling, you just kind of. Oh so, the, the, uh, I grew up in Stewiac. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, every now, single. Stewiac looks like how it's spelled. Sure. Though, but like every single, like every sounds. single person west of Nova Scotia called it Stewacky. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that I find <laughs> is most likely some latent amount of like dyslexia where <laughs> they are not looking at all of the letters or because it's an unusual combination of letters, they just kind of put them together in whatever form makes the most sense at the moment that they're reading it. That's without fine. like yeah. clearly trying to figure that shit out. Um, yeah. But I think there's always places like that everywhere, right? Like, yeah. most likely. you know, weird. Yeah, most places have weird place names, although I don't, th- those don't really disturb me. Um, maybe it's just no. because I've been around them for so long, but, uh, I, I like, I don't, they don't make me feel bad at all. Like I see the pronunciation and I just kind of accept it and sort of vaguely enjoy it even. So I wouldn't call it that disturbing. No. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not that disturbed by the kernel one or the ones where it just seems like people are starting to slur and simplify because that seems to be the evolution of language anyway. Um, yeah, a lot of that, like Worcester and, and kernel, that seems natural to me. I'm not that bothered by it. The, the one that bothers me that I did look up just before, you know, like five minutes before we started started tonight, which is something that doesn't make any sense to me. It bothers me because I looked it up and no one really knows why this happened is how mm-hmm. Canadians pr- pronounce apparent. I don't do this, but how can, uh, Canadians are supposed to pronounce the lieutenant, which is ridiculous because it it's not a shortening and no one understands why it's it's come to be this way and then people just say it with a straight face in in in, in offices of high authority oh my god you're right because yeah sure it's it's based on the french of lou but lou is easy to say you could maybe or even sort it into lieutenant or something but there's no re- left is like a big old hard stop in the middle that of the word that doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense i looked it up no one seems to really know it's mysterious it maddens me that yeah i mean it seems to be the standard for us but it really shouldn't be for any reason and and that's the one was, that's my most bothersome one i was aware of lieutenant is that a distinctly canadian thing I, I thought that was like it's British. British. It's British. Sorry, it's British, but yeah. we do it for like even like even less of a reason because there's no so, reason. So I mean, to stick it kind of makes sense because the British will just go with anything, right? Like, <laughs> you know, they're responsible for fucking Cockney rhyming, rhyming slang and all that nonsense. So, like, you know, I don't, I don't trust the British with language. <laughs> um, but like as as a uh, as a linguist, as someone who studied linguistics, uh, socio and neuro linguistics in university, um, frankly, it's a miracle that English survived. Um, <laughs> it is such a fucking mess. Um, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, pronouncing C O L O N E L as Colonel or L I E U T E N A N T as lieutenant. Um, like, I don't know. I've seen enough out of English to go, like, yeah, all right. You know what? Like, you do what you're going to do. I mean, cause... Eng- English survived in the way that, like, Keith Richards survives. Like, there's a lot of abuse. It's been through a lot. <laughs> it's, 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 it's well, true. it's like, like the English language, it's a language of, like, brigands and invaders yeah right it's just yeah. outright theft and mutilation the, the low language of a people that were extremely resilient um and kept getting subjugated by other groups like you know uh germanic peoples and the you know latin and uh french you know and so that's why we have so many different uh like languages all mixed up and so depending on like where the uh etymology of a word comes from also determines like how you will pluralize it and you know how you will conjugate it as a verb and there can be homonyms that 
are pluralized and like conjugated completely differently becomes they come from different cultures at some point. And also the reason why we have like separate names for living creatures versus the meat that they produce. Mm, cow versus because, beef. Yeah. Cow versus beef because cow, I believe is, yeah, it's like the low English and then beef comes from buff French. Uh, People so like who, the French who never had to interact with the living animal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the uh, it's sort of a weird phonetic tally of like the wins and losses. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a great book um, that I recommend to anybody that is interested in the English language um, and in linguistics to a certain extent. And it's also it's very simply and easily written. I may have even recommended this on the show before, but um, a book called uh, "The Mother Tongue: English and How It Got That Way." by bill bryson hmm. fantastic fucking book um i recommend sounds great one that has an interest in it um i reread it every couple of years rock the quintessential yeah. strange place name that i was trying to think of earlier is quiz pam sis um Quis in, Pam sis it's it, it's in new brunswick and it is actually spelled much like it sounds um but it it really stymies people on the road who see it on signs and uh, I was going through New Brunswick on the way to visit my folks uh, with my partner, and she had never been through it before. And it was just fascinating how many tries it took her to get it down to the pronunciation of Quispam Sis. Because it's, you know. There's a whole song about that in Pete's Dragon, about passing McQuaddy. You remember that old movie? I sure remember. you Only do. vaguely. Sure you do. It's about, <laughs> it's about a dragon and a little boy. And a, and a and a potion salesman who comes to town and he can't pronounce the name of the town and it's a whole thing because it is a whole song it goes a little something like this <laughs> I don't remember it <laughs> but it's funny. am I supposed to put it on or you're like okay. no no it's it's yeah. it's good it, uh, it uh it's, we got four separate uh <laughs> like content claims. On uh, the last episode, or yeah, the, no. uh, the episode prior. Fortunately, to that. Um, we we live in a world where pretty soon there's going to be an AI to make a shitty recorder cover of any song. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but it was it was it, it uh it was uh Jim Dale played the snake oil salesman and he sings the whole thing. Him and Red Buttons. It's fucking great, man. Fucking watch it. Go for it. You know, get on Pete's Dragon right now. You know, it's it's back. With, uh, it, it, word warning: it's back when being an alcoholic was funny. Uh, yeah. So that's a, of course you know, that is a common theme in those old movies. So a uh, little Mickey Rooney humor there because he's drunk all the time. Um, uh, good question. That wasn't a question mm-hmm. at all, but it was. It was good. It was a question. Thank that you. was a question. No, it was a question. No, yeah, it was, it's, uh, it's uh, a question. seven sounds like a very good estimate because I can imagine a word that's about three mm-hmm. worse, even though I can't uh, think of a good example at the moment. Yeah. A lot of the English homonyms, two words that sound the same, even though they're spelled differently. A few of those are pretty egregious. Uh, yeah. So about a five. Yeah, that's fair, too. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got, got another one? Yeah, and uh, Nadal Miral asked, if I'm if I'm butchering these names, sorry. <laughs> they didn't sound sorry at all. Sorry. So aggressive. <laughs> sorry. I, I, yeah, I'm doing my best. Nadal Miral asked, uh, uh, Colonel's be question, assuming Laura is cake, does this make the other's characters lewd and levacious advances towards her more or less acceptable? Uh, does your answer change if these characters know that Laura is made out of cake? So all these weird sexual advances. So if if she's made out of in cake, the event in the event that they are actually lewd and lascivious, then no, that's still weird. That's still kind of gross. I mean, look, it's gross. Um, it, it's gross straight up. First of all, but I mean, like. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter whether okay it's cake or not. Against the sentient it's sort pain. of a it's sort of a grass is greener thing. Like you can toggle it back in your forth back and forth in your head, and it's kind of worse every time. You know. I, yeah. I yeah. actually think the thing that makes it better is that we have attempted to kiss several people <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> yeah, like the the cake golem known as Laura clearly has some issues with personal boundaries. 
Yeah. Well, maybe I'm just like trying to fulfill my biological objective of being eaten mm-hmm. as cake, and so I'm trying to force myself into people's mouths. And, and I think at this point, yeah, I think that I think what the the spirit of the question is 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 do we have to change the rules if while Laura might be a sentient being, if they are made out of cake, can we even know what rules of morality apply anymore? If your goal is to be consumed. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a good question. If her goal is specifically to be consumed, if she has a, an imperative to be eaten, um, mm-hmm. well, I don't know how that really uh, applies on sort of a moral thing. It would be more fine for people to eat her, quite possibly. Um, however, yeah, like, I don't know, being creepy to her is probably weird. Although... I would have to revisit some of the things that were said in case they were being in case there is a chance that they are miscontextualized, Mm. you know, Um, you know, if you're looking at a cake and the cake knows they're a cake or you believe that the cake to know they're they're a cake and like you're like, "Mm, you look delicious, you know, like Mm -hmm. in most cases, eh, not a great thing to say to somebody. Um you know non consensually but uh um you know if you're if if you're like oh man you look delicious like you are that's a good looking fucking cake you know <laughs> like you might take it there's as a compliment some, there's some yeah. philosophical nuance to it but yeah. like fundamentally if if Laura's a sapient creature even with limited understanding of how human beings function Theoretically, as a sapient creature, she has bodily autonomy that should be respected by the people around her. Yeah. Even if she's going around putting her weird cake hands on stuff and sniffing everybody, like, the fact that she doesn't understand boundaries doesn't mean she doesn't, you know, have an entitlement to sort of basic respect. And that's where intention, that's where the sort of mens rea comes in here. It's like, um, (laughs) if, if... She is interested as cake t- uh, in being cake and being consumed, <laughs> and everyone's expectation or what ha- or this the expectations that have been set is that she is cake and one must consume her. So I, don't know. <clears throat> I think we're saying objectively, it's it's bad. Yeah, subjectively, probably also bad. <laughs> Probably also bad, unless clearly Laura wants to be eaten. It's hard to know because we are Laura, but also we're not. <laughs> and I, I mean, obviously not. We're trying to get her to like be at least a little goblin, and she's refusing at at, at all chances. Yeah, the the game so. is telling us how she is. Yeah, you are non-violent. What what you <sighs> are not interested in creating chaos. Is this an interesting like is this a does this sort of represent how much control Laura has over her own life as a cake golem? Uh like awesome. our our being able to control her up to what would you say 50%, 60? Mm. Like, oh, I mean, I don't know. I'd say maybe we've been successful like, with a good twenty to thirty percent. We, we we can move her beyond around. movement. We can move. We can move her around, and we can passively interact with the world almost all the way. Um, yeah. which goes a long way. It really does. Are we intrusive thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I have wondered that, like. <laughs> Because we, we, we input a lot of commands and relatively few of them go through. And it just makes you question like whether every okay. one of her actions is the result of a cognitive pachinko chip finding its way down to the very bottom of the board. Okay, okay. so I would I, I really, really want to get Julia's opinion on this because Julia's actually like doing this. So how do mm, you view – th- what, is, what is the difference between – how you view the player and the character. What what kind of, how did they come together? This is a really interesting question because clearly from a game design standpoint, you can't program every possible input that a, that a player will attempt, but you do want to give them the feeling that they could, which is yeah. the whole magic of the text parser. Um, but at the same time, um, there could be, and, and I do this as well in my game, the Crimson Diamond, please wish, list, wish uh, wishlist it on Steam. Um, okay. Do it. The, the, the thing is, is um, 
part of the the way for writing the characters, like the character in in adventure games, are not necessarily blank slates. We see this with Laura Bow and how she sees people and makes assumptions, and, and we've mentioned that she's quite judgmental in a few places. Um, it's because mm-hmm. she has her own point of view and she has her own thoughts, and she, she you know, and based on those, like there are things she won't do, like she won't kiss the you know gross men that she sees that we try to get her to kiss. Although and she is a, a she is attracted or gross to ladies. Geez. Yeah. Yeah, she is attracted yeah, or the grace to Jews. Women. Yeah, she is attracted to Jews, but she still won't. And that's that's the tension between what yes. we want to do versus what she wants to do, which tells us more about who she is. Um, yeah, yeah, she she's attracted to him, but she finds him strange. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. So there's all that. So that that's part of the magic to me is this this play of okay, well, we can't program everything, but also there are sometimes when we're going to tell the player no, and that's not to do with game design stuff. It has to do with the writing. Yeah. And that's what's so cool and compelling about this is because, yeah, um, we it could be that we could be her intrusive thoughts, or it could be that, you know, like well, the parser doesn't understand. Maybe she doesn't understand. She's got a little cake brain. Maybe maybe this is as far <laughs> as her ability goes um, because maybe she's got a tiny little little dictionary in her head she doesn't have a big vocabulary and, and she's you know goes around but yeah I, I think that's one of my favorite things about adventure games is this that that whole idea where you know i want to do something but i'm not directly controlling her and the thing is that's interesting about earlier sierra games is that you you could almost directly control because you could just march sir graham right off into the water to get eaten by crocodiles you could walk them off the cliff edges you can walk people off staircases and that was ultimately oh i'm controlling this character and that character is beholden to my every desire no matter yeah. how you know mm-hmm. counterproductive to their own lives it is and then later on what we get is laura uh she will still fall off certain <laughs> things but she won't well actually she, she walks right into the bayou and never mind her but i mean <laughs> later on adventure <laughs> games people will not walk off of cliff edges anymore and, and that's part of a player convenience but also it's this idea that yeah you don't directly control this this character anymore it's a negotiation between the two of you yeah uh, uh, well yeah and i think part of the you know part of the trade-off for that is that graham has the personality of a log <laughs> yeah but, but you yeah. can just you know do whatever so a character that I've... would just walk right into traffic i mean that's yeah he doesn't have his own ego necessarily yeah i, I think i've played adventure games before that had a slightly different narrative tone where the character had their own voice and would talk to you saying things like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not willing to do that. Exactly. Interesting. Um, So there's there's stuff like this where we are sort of Laura, but we are also informed about who Laura is Mm -hmm. through the options that are available to us. The, The things we can do inform us a little bit. The choices available to us inform us a little about who Laura is, but I've definitely seen other games. I can't think of a good example right now where, the character actually speaks to you and expresses directly, I'm not willing to do that. Like, I'm yeah. only allowing you to call the shots to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, they do that. And I think um, in some LucasArts games, like Guybrush will talk to yep. the fourth wall, like the player and say, you know, whatever. He'll say, oh, oh, I can't use that on that or something. And you actually see his little face, his head moving a little bit. So you yeah. know, he's actually talking to us, which is a d- definitely an in- interesting approach. And that is another difference between the two, <laughs> the two studios. But I like this approach more. Yeah, it feels more like internal. Really. It does. It feels a little more immersive. Uh, mm-hmm. I uh, yeah. I um, I would be I would be thrilled to play a text parser adventure game that would yes and mm-hmm. anything that the the designer was able to think that you would try to do. Um, it's impractical, of course, but I um, I think AI will make that possible pretty quickly. I mean, it, AI well, means a lot yes, of like. But terrifying things for a lot of industries but like if you didn't mind the story becoming confusing and abstract you could probably have an ai powered engine that would put you in a situation like this but be basically willing to let you perform any action on it yeah yeah Yeah. and i mean like that would be pretty cool although i i have my doubts about the creativity of an ai uh and like i guess that's why like tabletop role playing is so much more compelling mm-hmm. in many cases, right? Because then it's just the DM, and depending on how permissive your DM is, um, then you know you can kind of end up doing whatever. Um, and in some cases, that can lead to a little bit of strife within your gaming group. <laughs> um, but well, well uh, here's the thing yeah. about the, the the thing is a DM is a, is, a, is a conscious force that has an idea of the narrative that they want to impose on it. Well, AI doesn't. And that's an, yeah. also an issue in terms of giving the player agency is, you know, also the, the developer wants to tell a compelling story. It's often stories you need character development and an arc 
like a narrative arc mm-hmm. to follow for there to be a satisfying conclusion. But if you if you give the player 100 percent agency and you're not steering you know steering the player through a, a game or adventure game that has you know this idea of okay well these are the events and here's roughly the, uh, the order that they happen then they're it's really hard to have that kind of a buildup. And are you going to have a satisfying ending where somebody feels like they've actually experienced a story well told versus just random actions? Um, and that also, and also is another thing about this type of game, especially adventure games, narrative based games is I, I want the, I want the player to have agency and feel like they can do anything. But at the same time, I want them to experience a story from beginning, middle and end that is satisfactory. And the example I give in terms of like the tension between having a story based game versus an open world game is something like if I was going to design a game about the three little pigs, I, if I was going to do an adventure game versus an open world game, in an open world game, I can go to any of the houses at at any in any order, right? I can go to the brick house first if I wanted to, or whatever. But it, if it's an mm-hmm. you know, if I want to build up to the brick house, then that's a whole other consideration about how I'm going to steer the player. If I'm indeed going to steer the player to to an ending, and then that's another thing where maybe they're not going to have the best experience if they if we just kind of let them do literally anything, yeah, at any time, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, a, a curated story with sort of like satisfying arcs and conclusions, sort of a necessary component of it, I suppose, is uh, a little bit of limitation. You know, there's a certain mm-hmm. maze that you're finding your way through that has specific endings that gives you that sort of like you can arrive at a particular conclusion. Um Whereas if you had something that was more procedural, where everything was sort of mm-hmm. reactive and generated based on your decisions – whether or not the ending is satisfying would be kind of random. Like one player might have a really good experience and find that they, you know, they had a compelling ending to their sequence of events while other people wouldn't so much. Yeah. And I guess a lot of it has to do with the goal of the developer. I mean, there, there are, you know, things like Dwarf Fortress and and things like that, where the the satisfaction is the, the interplay of all these different systems that the developer has created for the, for the player to create their own kind of idea of what a story would look like. But if the developer themselves has a story that they do want the player to experience, and it's a completely other consideration in terms of what we're going to allow the player to do and what systems are available to us to, in order to accomplish that. Yeah, yeah. I I think what you're likely to see more than AI telling you a story like a Star Trek holodeck is sort of a hybrid where there's a framework that the thing's looking with, but also if you tell it that you want to insert a spade widthwise into your mouth, the game just informs you that that kills you. Like, yeah, that that you, that that exceeds the limits of your human anatomy, so you are killed <laughs> by that. Or like we we do murder him there and we are arrested by the police like the game just has an elegant way of saying like you do that here's what happens here here's here's a description of what happened to you as a result of that without the developer having to think of every possible you know input that a person could type and that's and that's how it should be used i think uh i i will say that you know i mean it it's it's dm skill ultimately mm-hmm. as well but like you it is still possible to um, bring something around yes. to sort of the narrative that you want to tell as long as you, you know, as long as you're flexible enough with your hooks, right? Um, now, I mean, again, uh, it, it's impossible without either, you know, the procedural and uh, sort of systems-based um, skill of a machine, I guess, uh, to you know, bring something around and eventually get to sort of the plot points that you want. But then again, also I found that in my experience DMing, like my, my best sessions have been when I've just been like, okay, there's something that I want to do, but you know, we'll get there if the players are are feeling it, or we'll you know just allow them to you know um, hunker down in a cave while the uh, while the questing arms of the moon. Uh, you know, <laughs> hammer at the doors. Um, hammer at the doors. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a there's a lot of different styles of DMing, which are kind of analogous to different types mm-hmm. of gameplay design. So mm-hmm. there's certainly a yes and type of DMing where you just decide how much of an evil genie you want to be. You let the players do what you want, but you can also inject ironic consequences as kind of an incentive as to to stick with a more reasonable course of action. Right. Um, space design exactly uh, there's also the players the tools to do whatever the fuck they want and then eventually they'll uh, they'll do it uh i i ran a long uh campaign for some animators here in town 
And I found one of the most useful things was to figure out what story the players were trying to tell because they had their own mm -hmm. stories within them, right? So I would sort of take those ideas and augment them. So um, it made the thing run a lot more smoothly because I could have certain through notes to tie the different stories together. But fundamentally, if the player has something they're already motivated to do, enabling them to pursue that course of action is one of the easiest ways to get the gameplay rolling rather than ever trying to get them back on track with a particular thing. You might find a good hook to tie it all back together, or maybe the player had a better story in mind. Yeah. And you got to be open to that as a DM. Um, I just want to point out that Laura being made out of cake led mm -hmm. to this discussion. And it also <laughs> led to the cannibalism discussion. <laughs> it's a true conversation and, starter. And, and I truly believe if you want to accept one of these, you have to accept both. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry but there it is that's what I think we spoke uh, a while ago about a groundhog's day existence <laughs> where how long what's the tolerable length of a groundhog's day because the, the movie groundhog's day he lives the same day over and over again and he strives for the perfect day and he eventually sort of achieves the perfect day and the movie ends um, and he escapes his groundhog's day scenario so to speak and we spoke about doing like a whole year or a whole decade over and over again. Yeah. And how that was just too long, because if you tried something really daring, you would end up in what we refer to as another prison fighting timeline, where you just fight people in prison until you <laughs> run out the clock and get to start over. And I think that's kind of what an AI narration assistant would do in an adventure game is it would curate an infinite number of prison fighting timelines for when you have committed too many socially unacceptable actions to complete the remainder of the game. I mean, th th that's just, th those would just be dead ends. Like, you know, that's all it is. In the end. That's all those are. That's, that's another thing, too. Yeah, the, 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 like we think about Sierra deaths, right? And... The AI has to decide when to end the game, like when to kill you, because anything can kill you, anything cannot kill you. And it, like, when is it going to make that call? About, okay, we're going to put you in jail forever, and the rest and the rest of this gameplay um, session will be just you being in jail, having the same day over and over again. Or will you be, you know, will you be killed in jail? Will you go on a hunger strike or something? I don't know. Like, I don't know how it's going to decide when it's over. I mean, it, it's, it's true. It depends on whether it uh decides to give you something to do in, in jail right like you can you could say like okay well now you're incarcerated so now your story is escape what, or what, you know if or you just take over the prison sort of, be become yeah. the new heavy on the unit why, why is, and if you just want to give up then that's the end of your game right? why is an ai the rest of my life in prison why is an ai dm more likely to put you in jail than a human dm <laughs> I think because we want to tell more than just the take over the prison story. I just oh no, uh, I'm not saying the AI will put, send you to jail. I think you, the player, will. Yeah. If we did half of the actions, the, the reason Laura can't do all of these things is that right. the logical conclusion is that we would get caught. So when, once you right? once you take away all of the uh, the restrictions, yeah. Then you take a reasonable course of action and the core, like the skeleton of the story takes over. There's a mystery. The mystery is already here, whether it's procedurally generated or not. Actions that we take that are sensible with regard to solving that mystery will eventually solve the mystery. Actions that are nonsense will lead to, you know, other consequences. The hypothetical there is what if the game could yes and anything? But like, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Well, if we live in a simulation... And things are looking like we might. That's kind of what life is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you but know. also, you don't engage in reckless and disturbing behavior because of the known consequences. No, but, of that. but, some, it, but you, when you play Red Dead Redemption, that is not how you behave. True. You that's ride true. through a town and you lasso but, an old man and you drag him for eight miles until he's dead. But, and you do it because Rockstar doesn't care whether you do yeah, that or not. Yeah, but there are absolutely some people out there that know the consequences and still do that. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's wild. So. The, the game as a kind of lesser simulation to let you experiment with things. Yeah. Uh, Matt and I worked on um, a sort of Telltale-esque adventure game. Um, 
that uh, was going to have multiple chapters. And the idea was that the consequences of your decisions will branch over to other chapters. And as we were investigating how that gets done, the somewhat disappointing answer is that your first chapter has certain output nodes. There are maybe three, maybe half a dozen decisions that actually had any bearing. Mm -hmm. And each of them only had a couple different endings. Those output nodes serve as input nodes for the second chapter, and that determines things about it. But the second chapter can't have more output nodes than the first one did. So fundamentally, those decisions become meaningless. Or if you choose between two characters who live or die, those characters exist in a state of reduced agency for the second game because there can't be infinite consequences. Mm -hmm. The thing about an AI storyteller is you can have infinite consequences. So... Those two characters could have really chaotic and infinitely complicated influences on the remaining chapters. Uh, the trade-off would be that you no longer have a specific human narrator driving the bus. You have them just controlling the parameters Yeah. Um, with, within which the narrative can operate. And a lot of it would be the same. It would be about inserting dead ends where you could no longer tell a reasonable story or where the story is no longer compelling. But if you wanted a Mass Effect game where it really matters who lives and who dies, because it sort of doesn't in the current Mass Effect game, you 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 end up with a sort of zombie character who can just fundamentally do less. And every chapter they have less agency as a result. It's just that's because it's the limits of human effort, right? Well, I think the limits uh, of the AI effort would be how does the AI make the call of I think I don't think this is a compelling enough story to continue with this and then end it. Like I don't. How do they make that call? I think the AI never would. Yeah, that's the problem. I think, with it, I think, I think eventually your character would get killed and that would be your dead end. Uh, but a genuinely branching storyline with infinite branches is sort of beyond human ingenuity or human patience. Like you could have a human employed as the DM on the under other end of the game sort of inputting new stuff for you. But it would have to be procedural in order for it to be genuinely infinite. Absolutely. It wouldn't at that point be an adventure game in the standard mm -hmm. sense. It would be a game like a Minecraft, game. where all gameplay is emergent. The mm -hmm. game doesn't give you problems. You create your own problems. So, I guess what we're trying to say, is that a good answer to your question, Natalia? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. We did a game design discussion. Yeah, you guys. We sure did. Everyone here's worked on games. And yeah, we did a talk. We did I, a talk. Yeah, you can tell which one of us is the artist, uh, and just the artist. <laughs> <laughs> I had the least amount to contribute to that, but that's fine. Everybody here does art. Just you guys also do everything else too. I, I think your question, Matt, about why is the AI more likely to send you to jail is a good one. Ah. The AI is not seeking to punish the player unless you tell it to. So, yeah. 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 I, I, I think you could probably make an AI that, while not as good as a human storyteller, could do um, what you knew. You, you need to give it a little spark of Luke. That's what you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you'd need because most of you won't know this having not played it a Luke game. But Luke is really good. Like he's not the evil genie DM. Um, and he, he, he doesn't necessarily have the highest investment about getting you back on the rails. He's mostly concerned with people having a good time. With I, it. So if you captured that in an AI's inputs, you could, you, there would kind of be no dead ends. It's just like, well, this is clearly a, you know, this person can no longer exist in polite society. So let's make an impolite society for them to exist. In. And I, and I really do think Luke just gives us the rails to put down. <laughs> most of yeah. The time. yeah, pretty much. Luke doesn't mind where the train goes, no. so he doesn't mind if it stays on the no. rails or not. Um, yeah, that was a great question. I think I, that, that was freaking great. You guys are great. We're, we're great. Uh, can be anywhere. Long, long story short, even if your body's made of cake, you probably still have body autonomy if you're a conscious, living, moving thing. Yeah, it's true. And we've also established, due to Laura's specific reactions to a lot of these things, that she has enough autonomy and enough non-desire to be eaten as a cake golem that it is in fact not good yeah their behavior is gross either way yeah. it's differently gross if their attraction is because she's a novelty rather than just a a, a woman 
yeah. that they don't know. I think, um, yeah, it's it's kind of because there are no, it's, there's no voice acting here. A lot of the time, we kind of give the characters tone, and we could always say there's room for misinterpretation about you know how the characters are saying certain things. But we, I can cite one example where you know Wilbur saying, "Oh, come over here, whatever you're with, pretty lady," and then oh, yeah. uh, Loris is creepy old man. So we know that she does find those advances creepy. Absolutely. In which case, yeah. Um, it's it's not- another example of Laura telling us who she is. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. By what she is and is not willing to do, and by her occasionally judgmental summaries of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so these kind of like these kind of discussions, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get meta here for a second, but like some people love them, some people don't like them, and uh, That's true. Uh, if you don't like them, you're probably not here anymore. So, um, also true. Like if you look on 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 the comments for episode five, the top comment is Seth Wilson with. This whole cake discussion is without a doubt the best thing that's ever existed. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 on the other end, you get Dean the Great saying, loving these videos, but can you please play the game? The commentary is definitely not related to the game. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. True, but also you're probably not <laughs> you're in the wrong spot, stick bud. around because like, this is just how we are. Yeah. Yeah, uh, at least we've been saving it for the second episode recently. It's true. I I mean, like that's not by design. I think we just naturally yeah. get um kind of derailed. It's when... like I can, I can start the episode and like keep us playing for a little while. But you know, it's whenever we uh, do the uh, <laughs> the uh, Colonel's be questions. Colonel's be questions. Yeah, we yeah. get it to be questions, and and then we have to respond to them. And we just happen to have a lot of things to say most of the time. Um. I, want to sh- and I don't want to just like stop a, a good thread of conversation in the middle so that we can continue. Oh, to absolutely. Play. Like, the game will be there when we get back. Absolutely. Pause we know what we are, but because we have now invited, uh, we, we've, we've sort of raised the age gate, which we haven't, but we've sort of let more people in. Uh, this might be a weird thing for new new viewers. It's true. So you, you'll <laughs> either get used to it or you'll leave. So we hope you, yeah. we hope you like it if you're sticking around. Um, yeah. I want to shout out Dragon Design, who said, uh, "Surprised nobody has mentioned this yet." So I will, Matt. You did yourself on the drawing for the series thumbnail mm-hmm. this time. I've liked them all, but this one is hands down my favorite. Thank you. I actually think someone did mention it, and I'm feeling horrible that I don't know who it was. It's it's, it's spectacular. It's really really was it, good. Was it? I can't, I can't, I can't remember. But somebody else did it. Somebody else did it. Uh, so yes, thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you, Julia. Thank you. I, 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 it's actually one of my favorites too. I think it turned out all right. And I and I did it way early. <laughs> did we it. need merch. We need merch. We, we need an art book. Uh, one thing we might actually be able to do to make the experience a little less jarring for some people is a bit of an editing chore, but... Anytime we're just on a static screen like this for a long time, just throw the podcast screen up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's all broken down in into chapters, right? So if you want, if you want to skip I, this... I put one, the effort into... Point, yeah, into, you do. Into chapters. Now, I mean, like, I'm not very... Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm, I get a little creative with the titling. Yeah. So you might not recognize that something is going to be a podcast. But, I mean, like... All things considered, I do pause the screen. Like you can, you can mouse over the timeline and look and see if the screen has moved at all. Yep. Um, and if it hasn't, like this episode for the last probably half hour, um, then you know that we have stopped playing. Now, I mean, like sometimes I will do some stuff in the background, like wander around a little bit or like look at Clarence and talk to him very briefly, but, um. You know, you also did not really gain or lose anything by that interaction. And yeah. if something interesting is happening in the plot, then we will typically sort of change gears and go back to gameplay. But yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Uh, 12 Ops thinks that uh, there's a, a film or game in this You Have Become Cake idea. It should be called Baker's Man and heavily feature the <laughs> Patty Cake song. Like a horror movie. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I definitely, with the pa- with the Patty Cake song... That definitely, like, that's definitely more horrific, where the baker's man appears, <laughs> you know? You just see him framed in the doorway and you run. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I think, I think, that, I mean, people had a lot of stuff to say about their favorite themes. 
Uh, Obi Wan mm-hmm. Bill Kenobi looked up the theme to Jason the Wheeled Warriors and it was impressed. You you should be. That is it is it is still the best. Still the best. Um, uh, Spivey Lou simply the best. <laughs> Spivey Lou was the Highlander show, uh, but that's that's nineties. But she points that out. I mean, it, that's also Queen. But it's also but it's also Queen. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it the? Is it the? Is it the full version or is it an instrumental version? Uh, no, no. It's uh, the intro is <clears throat> lyrical. It is Freddie Mercury. Oh, so it's straight up Queen. Yeah. I, mean, I am immortal. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't. have inside me blood of kings. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you can't. Beat I that. have awesome. no equal. No man can. Or no what? What is it? I don't remember. I don't know. But yeah, it, yeah Take it's me good. to the future of your world. Slash across. But they, uh, they use that for the movie, right? And then they just used it as the, for I the show. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Obi Wan Bill Kenobi also commented that the all the meat talk was pretty gross, which is fair. Just bear in mind, like. We are not trying to gross you out. We just are gross. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But, yes, but, there's a distinction. Yeah, we're not we're not doing it at you. If that helps, I don't know if that helps. But, but it's it is not an act of malice on our part. But also, and there is no direction to this. Yeah, no, rudderless, rudderless grossness. It's just innate. <laughs> rudderless, rudderless grossness. There's exactly. a distinct possibility that people might be grossed out by Matt's story about putting bags of onions on his feet and linking onion juice all over his bed. Yeah, um, but that's I would not a little bit inten- like in- it's not intended to gross. It was intended to inform. Yeah, and, you, know, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. and I did ask after all. And so also, I mean, yeah. it was like an describing anecdote. it as Matt stock too <laughs> is not really something that I expect would not be. I'm not saying it to not be no. gross. I will admit that. People, but again, people, that's just because I'm a gross guy. People can be grossed out by that. People can also have a fetish for that. It doesn't matter. You know, we're not judging here. But we're not going to refrain. I think, in general, <laughs> however, the 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 average enjoyer of level zero NPCs is going to find that <laughs> funny before they find it gross. Yeah, or a little both. Also, it didn't get all over. It was like a few. It, well, it was, I mean, it was a tiny little, the, you know, just a little bit of a leak. The, the moment I knew for sure I was going to like Julia is when she proposed that uh, Laura was going to have fondant skin. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Because, because, because immediately, like it was like, like I was so disgusted. It was like an out of body experience. Like I tried to like escape the world <laughs> for a moment in my head, and I, that was the funniest shit ever. That was. Uh, I was floored by how disgusting that was. <laughs> I, I will say I was very pleased that I was able to get that kind of a response. Um, so, I mean, there's always that part of it, too. But, yeah, it wasn't definitely not my intention. A lot, a lot of people are, are uh, loving that you're joining us. So. Aw, I know. This is great, you guys. I'm having the time of my life. And, th- yeah, I mean, we've said before, this is something we've been talking about for years doing. And finally I get to be here. And people have seemed to have liked it and, and been responsive, which is just, just the best. Aww. Seriously the best. It's great. Yeah. We're just, we're just, simply the best. we're simply the best. <laughs> uh, should we get a little more playing done or do you think maybe a little more, eh? We yeah, well, okay. We can get a little bit. Do you know, I don't know if we're gonna find anything to do, but Well like cause... do are we stuck? Is that what's happening here? It we're could not be. stuck. No, we're not. Are... Well, I don't know. I mean are they are we? Is there a stuck yeah, kind of Polly, situation? You don't really understand me, don't you? You do you do understand me. There's a lot of threads at the moment, so it's not the easiest to tell how they fit together. We've got the I racehorse mean, scam. Well, yeah. We've got Gertie and uh, Clarence breaking up. We've got, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, Gloria and Clarence Gloria breaking up. Gloria and Clarence, yeah. But I mean, like, we got Colonel this Snodders is a very right? passive game. Yes. Right? Like, there's Also, no. disturbingly, no one believes us about the murder. Yeah. Yeah, but um, no one's seen. But no one, will go to, yeah. no one will go to look for the person. That's good, Clarence. It appears that Gloria, yeah. of course, she is. Tell about Clarence. Clarence. She's okay. Just, yeah. no, she's just gonna straight up ignore me. That is going to be her thing for the rest of this game, most likely. Um, oh, I almost just walked straight. I out. know. I was waiting for <laughs> the, you to do it. I wasn't even we, gonna say anything. <laughs> have Have we checked the um the room of the murdered woman? There we go. Cake. Uh, yeah. 
We've been in there. Have we like oh, have we man. checked it though? Like have we looked around for clues? Let's take another look. Have sure. we snooped? Yeah, let's go look around for clues. That's a good point. That caption too, it'll take a while to get all those splinters out, implies that we weren't actually killed. It's just like a prison fighting that timeline. It would be impractical to get the splinters out. That was a question out. that we had is that when does the soul leave the- we know that when she falls down the chute that we see the <gasps> angelic cake Laura. Did, but did, it doesn't happen here. So it this didn't is happen. nightmarish. No. Maybe it just takes her a long time to reconstitute. Oh my god. If I were making, for some reason, a cake human, I would give it, in D&D terms, the fast healing trait, so I wouldn't have to fix it constantly. Yeah. Invested with plant. Hmm. Potted plant graces the top of the small table. Investigate. Window. The tall French window adds grace and charm to this old house investigate bed the beds are old and lumpy oh well you're not going to be doing much sleep does she not sleep at all does she just not sleep i mean she's cake she just stand stand in one spot be quiet people are sleeping investigate this is a cozy guest room which gloria and gertie are sharing investigate suitcase you notice several suitcases in the room. They must belong to Gloria and Gertie. I believe this was hers. <clears throat> yeah, that was, the, that was where Gertie was. Yeah. Suitcase. They're locked. Unlock. Suitcase. You do not have the right key uh, to unlock. Can we suitcase. investigate Gloria's bed? Gloria's. Gloria's? Gertie's. Or no, yeah, it's it's definitely Gertie's bed. It's Gertie's bed. My bad. Gertie's dead. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a downer. Yeah. Look under bed. There's only dust under the bed. Look in bed side table. Mm. Game does not understand bedside. Look in table. You can't do that. This is done. We're over. We're over. <laughs> We're over. Eat self. It's Eat over. self. In it. <laughs> it does not understand self. Oh, well, I'm out of ideas. Break off a leg. Yeah. We're done. We don't know what that key opens. Like, in my real life, I've found stray keys to things and held out no hope that I would ever find what they open. Let's um, see if it opens the gun case. <gasps> It would be really helpful for us to be able to locate the body. Mm-hmm. Um, to be able to demonstrate to people that she really is dead. Uh, because that way we'd have more people willing to talk about, like, hey, I'm not the murderer for these reasons. You know, I, here's my alibi. I, this is one of the reasons why setting this at this time period is also handy. That's why modern stuff is difficult, because if this was set in modern times, we would just use our iPhone to take a picture of the dead body and then show it to people. Yeah. We're into Act Three. Oh, oh! Look at that. We're into Act. Th- what did we do? We just did we miss something. We just walked into Dude. Walked into Dude. What are we going to ask him about stuff? Look, ask him for cocaine. Silver yeah. seems very interested in that. Can magazine. we examine the magazine? Can we look at the magazine? Yeah, look at Investigate. it. Investigate <laughs> magazine. magazine. Oh Not damn it! Enough. We gotta actually stand. Oh. Get close. Come a little closer. You look over Wilbur's shoulder at the magazine and see pictures of race horses. All right, that could have been Ask worse. Ask about horses. Hmm. I got a special fondness for horses, especially race horses. <sighs> Ask about Clarence. Ask about special fondness. <laughs> Clarence can be a bit of a gruff at times, and he sometimes get himself into situations, but he's really not a bad. Oh, I w- ask him about Gloria. He, <laughs> Gloria about has this uh, embarrassing medical situation. <laughs> medical. Uh, let's ask about situations, and then we will ask about Gloria. No situations. Gloria. I did. Uh, I did help her with a little problem once, but I, <laughs> I shouldn't talk about that now. <laughs> he killed a spider for her. That's the story. <laughs> ask about problem. He does not understand problem. Press the subject. We can ask about Colonel, maybe, because he's the Colonel's doctor, so That's maybe he knows something about the doctor. Colonel. 
Oh, well, just between you and me, as Henry's physician, I can tell you that he's not as sick as he lets on. I think we'll see him around for many more years yet. Mm. <laughs> yeah. On account of him being literally Dracula. <laughs> he's a Dracula. He's a Dracula. In my medical opinion. Now, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know much about Gertrude. But if, if I had to speculate, I would <laughs> say she's a human. A human. Not and made of cake. And Not made of cake. And even a little bit. Oh, poor Gloria. She has more problems than she lets on. You know, if if if, if she'd only listen to me, things would be much better for her. I, I just wish Clarence could solve some of his problems. Uh, he just can't. He's a... Tell about <laughs> breakup. Gossip. I don't understand breakup. Tell about gossip. Tell he about tell about gossip. Clarence and Gloria. Oh, interesting. Clarence and Gloria. Oh, Clarence is real touchy about Gloria. Why? Why don't you just leave them alone? I'm I'm glad. I'm happy to see that they they did That's that. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. they informed him? Have we informed him about the murder? Tell about Gertie. Oh. Oh. No. I, 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 we already know the body's not there. I better go check on that now. I, bet you I mean, the body disappeared half an hour ago. At this point, I'll be. I'll be. I'll be. I'll be. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right back. But like, it, it, this is not an infinite estate. If we can't confirm her whereabouts, right? Yeah. It's not like proving that Bigfoot isn't real. Like, it's pretty easy to prove that she's not around. Oh. Yeah, she's not lying on the ground. Is she in her fucking bed? Like, what's wrong with these people? You're, cr you're crazy, girl. Good, he's not there. Lillian? Oh, I've seen Lillian here occasionally over the years. I got the feeling she doesn't like me, though. She does seem to be very protective of her Uncle Henry. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Indeed. That's Wilbur. Well, I am not discussing myself with you. I'm, I'm, I'm Can we cool. ask him about Laura? It's about <laughs> Laura. What about me? Oh. What difference does it make? What difference does Flash it make? Cake, You're only a cake. Yeah, exactly. You are, in my expert medical opinion, a cake woman. Now, now I'm willing to entertain the idea that I get to speak with you, but it it goes no further than that, young lady. No further than my that. medical opinion. You are inconsequential. <laughs> you were you you were you were made from magic and flour and sugar. And uh, the question of your personhood is one for a philosopher, <laughs> not for a doctor. You can't give me anything for my, my fold and found out skin. Take a look at this elbow, doctor. It's now, I'm, to tear. Uh, you would, you would yes, be... when you have anatomy to speak of. <laughs> You'd be better off speaking to Seely over me over that, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm, I'm not much of a, I don't know much about bacon. My arson has got flies in it. Well, I, th I think Seely is the best cook in the whole South, if you ask me. If you done, you did right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, you did. Do you think that interests me? <laughs> oh, have he's we asked him about Kristen Fifi? Bell Batman for a second. <laughs> have we asked him about <laughs> Fifi, Fifi, the other girl? Does he think she's as pretty as us? Okay. Oh, she is an attractive girl. Don't you think? Do you think she is? What do you think of her, Laura uh, Bow? I, I, I guess so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I never really looked myself. You know, no, sure you didn't. She's not my type. He tried to kiss her. Jeez, <laughs> oh, not a dream boat. Yeah, nah, I don't. I don't pay much attention to the butler. I didn't even know his name. If I'm being honest with you, much like yourself, I don't know if I he's like much how, of a person. Um, we're asking. We're having this conversation with Wilbur, but we're just not. We're not even facing him. We're just. <laughs> you guys are both facing the back wall. <laughs> Standing next to him, facing the wall. 
looking at a painting. And that's about all the time that we have for this, uh, this episode. Well, we're we're reading his horse magazine with him. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> uh, hey, look, look. For those ooh, of you, that's who, good. I like that. Th- oh, that's oof, oof. Uh, for those of you that uh, think this isn't going to end, you're right. It will not for a long time though. But hey, we're in Act Three. We are moving forward. Things are happening. Until we find out. Shoulders. <laughs> oh God. He'd love that. Uh, until we find out we screwed something up in, you know, Act 2, and we can't actually beat the game. Yeah. You know. Well, th- th- actually, th- with this game, I don't think you can get hard locked. You can just get locked out of being the best super sleuth you've ever seen. Definitely. Right, right. Yeah. 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 You can miss events, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you never know with Roberta, you know? Mm-hmm. You never know what she's going to pull on us. She was merciful. In she was one. merciful in this one. All right. uh, uh, a game of this genre too. I mean, I'm sure part of the uh, of this genre and age. I'm sure part of the point of it is failure states, right? So, yes. like, if you don't get the ending that you want, you play it again, and that's sort of the point. Mm-hmm. And overall, I would say, like, of the Sierra games that have a point value, like this would be one that I would be compelled to do a second try. It's like shit, I missed something, you know. Um, although I think this one just kind of gives you the murderer at the end, right? Like, I don't it, think there's a way to not know. It depends. There? There's an action that you can either do an action or do not an action, and then you get two different endings, which I gotcha. feel like might even be different from the other stuff that she's done in the past, because, you know, you think of King's Quest and stuff. Like, yeah, you can die to the crocodiles and stuff, but at the end, there's only really one ending. Really, Well, kind of. Right. I don't know. It's a linear you know? story. Yeah. It just happens to have a f- couple of puzzles in between that you can do in various orders. But, right. Yeah, this one has yeah. like at, like two distinct endings that you can have. And, and, I, and when you're playing this the first time through, chances are you'll get the first, the, like the not great ending and maybe get a feeling you do want to go back. And there's actually messages saying, here's some stuff you've missed and you know maybe you want to go back and take a look at that, which is a nice prompt to want to dive right into another playthrough. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Thank you for joining us, everybody. Yeah, leave stick and stay. Leave your uh, kernels be questions. That bell. Yeah, stick and stay. Stick like, and stay. comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel. <laughs> that's what. That's what it pe- sure does. That's what people say. That's what they say. That's what people say. Um, if you uh, you know tell uh, tell your friends about us. <laughs> tell your enemies Bother- about us. <laughs> tell your enemies. Bother people on city transit about yeah. us. Warn people. If you're waiting in line at the grocery store. Strike up a weird conversation with the person in front of you. Avoid blinking the entire time. If they're if they're uh if they're old, you can say, "Hey, you're old. You might remember some of these old games," and <laughs> see what I'd say. What they say. Get them. Get on. Get them on board. Get them on board. We're always here. You could also try the tactic of pretending to know them. Yeah. And be like, "Oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. How have you been?" And they'll be like, I'm sorry, do I know you? And you'll be like, yeah, I've been watching this thing, this YouTube channel, Level Zero NPCs. <laughs> I really think it might interest you, based on all of our previous interactions based that I, we've based definitely had. what I had. know about you, yeah. Oh, it's right up your alley. I, I'm not a professional evangelist. These are just general evangelism tips that I'm giving yeah. out. And if you don't know For the free. person's name, always call them... <laughs> or just like pal or pal yeah, pal say pal or yeah. swam or ace chief or swam sport or quesh swam or fl- swilem swilem is really good quesh swilem swilem oh man like i you know i i mistake myself for swilem every time <laughs> what is this swilem you old you old fucker how you doing <laughs> You know? Is this an East Coast thing? What is this? This is just no. no this is no, Matt this is being thing. insane is, and yeah. Luke having no problem. This with is, it. Okay, this is just yeah. gibberish. This is me yes ending Matt. You see? Don't don't worry. Question: Swilem are not a normal thing to say in uh, any context. <laughs> Fne is also very popular. Fne. Fne. F N E H. Fne. Common nickname. Silent. There is silent. It's like pal or yeah, bud. But there's no there's no apostrophe. I promise you, there's none. It's just, it's just because no, then it would be Elfin. Yes, it's just F N E H. 
Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, you know, give us your friggin' stick and stay, everyone. Yeah. Give us your Colonel's Big Questions. You know, we love the we love the uh, what do you call it? Or don't. We're not the boss of you. I know, but then we don't get to use that cool Colonel's Big Question. I will do it anyway. We'll do it anyway. We like I I even really like the comments where you guys are like, please stop doing this. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm crazy. I'll do it right now. You don't know when I'm gonna do something, except it takes me a little while to get there, and I have to alt tab out so the screen goes. And, dark. and you amazing. and you usually announce it right before you do it too. I do. I yeah. frequently do. <laughs> One thing I love about the text input games, and someone else commented on this as well, is we get to see a taste of Luke's impishness, where he just he's just standing there while Laura stares with her dark, current eyes, just staring at a horse while Luke tries everything he can to psychically destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, I'm just waiting for that one moment where I find a hidden interaction that... Uh, you know, or even just a response to to me beyond like, oh, I don't know what that is. Or you're not a violent person. I want the game to go, you know what? Fuck it. If you want to be a cat and knock something off of a shelf, here you go. Are you happy and like with for the rest now? of the game? And I would be very happy with mm-hmm. myself now in that case. For the rest of the game, it's like, I'm not going to help you. You broke my horse mm-hmm. for no yeah. reason. You just went in and broke my horse. Why would I trust you? Yeah. If you guys have any uh, thoughts on like the 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 aspects of game design and you know character and and how much you know AI is gonna fuck that up or you know it's gonna, like, it's gonna fuck up a lot of stuff. Then, we got to figure out how to use it responsibly. Us, we don't really know yeah, that yet. Let us know. Put it put it put it in the comments. You know because you know we love interaction. God, we we need it. We need it bad. <laughs> Jones in for it. We need it bad. we need it real bad. <laughs> Wilbur's got something for that in his, in his medical I, I, I imagine I do. It make me sleepy. It's math. That's what it is. It's math. All right, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go empty my onion bags now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go empty your onion bags. <laughs> well, you gotta you freeze it. You gotta stay. freeze it into Emily Matt's stock cubes. God, put it God. in the freezer. <sighs> oh, oh, I'm gonna get divorced. You can make it into soup. <laughs> make it into a soup. Uh, Feed it you gotta to boil. You gotta boil that down okay. into essence of mat foot and onion. I don't it think it so. sounds like something you're gonna tell your kids about when you're an old man, and they'll think it's not true, and then you can play them this. Yeah, that's true. Also, I'm probably gonna do it again because it fucking worked, and uh, I don't care why. I really don't. I really no, don't care. No, no, you why. shouldn't. You really should. I, I, it just it did, and that's all I care about. Hmm? Onions are cheap. They pork are. bags are a little expensive, but you can just reuse the ones you just. Ha- well, no, you're. Are you going? There? I kind of don't want to. I kind of feel. I kind of <laughs> feel like gross? those ones are done. Yeah, I kind of feel like having fresh onions is the point. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean the bags. Oh, like the Ziploc bags. Because I used you said Ziploc bags and and, oh. and you know sandwich bags. I'm assuming you're not putting your your feet in sandwich bags. The bigger no, the Ziploc big bags. Ones. Are the, yeah, they're the yeah. big freezer ones, which are like a dollar each. Basically, they're they're not cheap. Yeah, I'm gonna wash no. those out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Soap and water. Run them through the washing machine. <laughs> Run them through the dishwasher. Put them on the clothesline. Get the Put them on the clothesline. Get them on. <laughs> I mean, if you're just putting your feet and onions back into them, I'm not sure why. You're <laughs> I want them to be sanitary before I put my feet No, on. yeah. It's 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 a medical treatment. You need <laughs> fresh onions and clean Thank you. bags. Yes. It's exactly like heart oh surgery. Oh, my God. Maybe, I will, maybe I'll clean them out with alcohol. You never know. There you go. You know? God, it's a great idea. Uh, We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. That's going to go pickle his feet. Oh, my God. I'm not. I did that. (laughs) Again, though. I'm on clean. It's clean up. Stick and stay. Stick and stay. Stick and stay, everybody. It's just clean up.